All right, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this really cool sci-fi futuristic looking kind of low poly scene. It doesn't look low poly, and this is also rendered in Eevee. If you want to catch this animation some more, it's up on my Instagram. I got so much good response from this video, I had to make a tutorial. So, and if you want to download the original scene file, which is this one right here, I'll be providing that for a dollar on Gumroad, so you can go get that down there in the description. And just a quick heads up, we do have an exclusive Patreon tutorial for this ceramic material. So... Let's get into the tutorial now. All right, so let's first off hit Shift A and add a plane. I'm just gonna hit S, A, Enter. I'm gonna hit Shift A and s apply scale. So now we have this. I'm gonna go down here to the viewport display, go on right here and click uh, wireframe. And then what that's gonna do is when we subdivide it, I'm gonna subdivide it by 100. You're gonna see that wireframe without being in edit mode. And we're going to need that because next thing we're going to do is decimate this plane. So let's go ahead and add the decimate modifier. And we're going to bring it pretty far down like that. Let's bring it down some more. That looks about right. Maybe a bit higher. Okay, this looks good. Now apply that. And then we can go back in the viewport display and turn that off. So now we have these wireframes. Let's go ahead and go to edit operator search. Go to edit and operator search and type in edge split right down here edge split what that's going to do is while we're in edit mode if you go right here where it says median point click individual orient origins and you can scale all those vertices by themselves so we're going to be doing that so i'm just going to scale them down like that and let's go ahead and add a solidify just like that and then we can bring it down some add a bevel and we're gonna keep the the bevel number right here on segments, keep it at one. Next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and add our displace. So the displace modifier. So we're gonna to wanna to put this displace above the bevel. So let's just click this up air right here and displace. And then let's put also put it above the solidify. So now we have the displacement playing with our plane. So let's go on the displacement, click new and let's click clouds. So now we have all this crazy stuff happening. Now it's very important if it's not working, make sure in your hierarchy that displace is above the solidify and the bevel. So we'll just open those back up just like that. And then we're gonna go and give it a strength of 0.3 for now. And let's play, let's bring the depth all the way down and the size right around there. We just want it to look like waves. So now we have this. We can actually just bring up that strength a little bit. 0.5 so now we can see it is displacing our plane in that way and it's not bending those vertices so let's go ahead and add in a camera so let's shift a add in a camera kind of position your area to where you want control alt 0 snap it to view and if you hit R twice and G you can move it around G moves it around this way R hitting it twice moves your camera around in that way so we're just gonna move it like this so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and scale those vertices to be pretty close to each other like that. Okay, now we can go ahead and start shading this. So let's go over here to the little camera icon and switch to Eevee. We'll hit rendered. Right now my world brightness is at gray. So I'm gonna just change that to black. Right here on the world brightness, all the way down to black. Now you can't see anything. So what we're gonna do is go back to rendered view, shift A and add a light just a regular point light and we'll bring it over this direction so we can start seeing what's going on so let's start shading this so we click on it add a new material and just make it metallic so now we have this let's go into the shading tab here and hit Z to render and loop dev and let's start shading so what we're gonna do is use Voronoi so let's add a color ramp first so we can color that Voronoi just like this Add the Voronoi and plug the Voronoi into the color ramp. Now, if you have the Node Wrangler add-on selected, if you go into the pre Preferences, Add-ons, Add a Node, Node Wrangler, click that. And then what you can do is you can hit Control T, adds your texture setup really quick, and we'll just switch it to Object for now. So now we have, you can see the Voronoi happening. We're going to change it to Cells. And let's change distance to Mikowski. 
And then we do that, we need to play with this exponent. So if we play with the exponent, bring it all the way to 32, we get this really cool techy looking material. So we're gonna stick with that. And let's go ahead and add a bump node. We'll add this bump node right here and plug the Voronoi into the height. And now you can see it start working. Now I wanna add some more detail in this. I don't wanna just be a Voronoi bump. We need to add some more bump. I love adding tons and tons of detail. So we're gonna do that with a checker texture. So CH checker. We're gonna add this mapping node down here on the vector, plug the color into the height and this normal into the normal. So now if we scale that up a bunch, now we have even more detail in this. So it just adds detail on top of detail and let's scale up this for noise as well. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and start adding the lights that we want. So let's just delete this point light, shift A, and we will add a light point light right here and scale them up or we'll bring them up a little bit. And then we'll give it a strength of 100 and now we can start seeing it play with our scene. Let's bring him closer, just like that. And just a tip, if you're using your camera and you don't want to see this extra stuff around here, you can go camera, viewport display right here on this, and you can just darken it a little bit, just so that you can kind of see what that camera is going to be seeing. And let's go back to the light, click your point light, and change it to, I'm going to go with a light sort of teal blue. And then I'm going to take that light here, point light, I'm going to duplicate it, bring it this way, change it to a sort of orangey yellow. So I think I can bring this guy a bit closer. Now let's bring him actually farther back. Once it starts playing with it, we can start messing with some more of the design. But right now, I think the, the lights are kind of where I want them to be for now. So. Let's go to the bloom here. If you don't have bloom turned on here in your EV settings, you're gonna want screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, and bloom. So, so we're gonna be playing with this bloom intensity later, but uh, by the way, that can't be animated. I'm sure some of you might be thinking that. I thought that as well, but you can't animate the bloom right now. That would be the, the brightness of your lights. So let's go back to shading real quick and let's add in some roughness. So let's add in another color ramp, plug this Voronoi into the roughness, I mean into the color ramp and the color into the roughness. So now we can start playing with that. So we can just do something like that. You can see what you what you like, but now we get this fun stuff. Now let's go ahead and start animating this. So to animate it, and I've shown this in a couple tutorials before, a bunch of you guys on Reddit actually guessed this part and it's not the wave modifier. So we have this right here, a circle, and we have an empty. Now make sure you don't move any of this stuff right now. Go to the empty, go to the empty constraints right here. Add follow path right here in target, pick the circle. Now let's animate it really quick. So right here on end, we're gonna give it 120 frames, just like that. And in your edit on the preferences, make sure that in your animation tab that your default interpolation is on linear. So now we have this offset. So insert keyframe, go to the very end, hit the right arrow so you have frame 121 and type in 100 in your offset, just like that. And you're gonna see it go around in that circle and it's gonna be a perfect loop. So now we gotta click the plane, go to the displace modifier and where it says local, go to object and pick the empty. Um, and we'll watch it animate. So right now it is running at nine frames a second. That's because of the bevel. It's giving our scene too much topology, at least for my computer to handle. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is hit this little icon right here called real time and it'll just turn that bevel off and now we can watch it animate in real time. So now we have this nice smooth animation. Let's go back into look dev, not look dev, the render view, just to see how this looks. It's looking really cool. But we're having a problem and that's because the Voronoi is moving around. It's kind of a cool effect but that's not what I want to see. So what I have to do is I'm gonna go back out of that view. I'm gonna hit the tilde key click all the way to the top, and the tilde key is right under the escape key, at least for laptop users. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit to go to edit mode, hit U to unwrap, and click project from view. And so what that's gonna do is when we go to the UV editor right here, you're gonna see it. 
So I'm going to hit B to box select, scale it all the way up to it fills this little box here, just like that. And now let's go back to shading. And instead of object coordinate, we're going to be using the UV coordinate. And that's going to be use those UVs we just unwrapped. Now we have to scale up everything by quite a bit. So we'll just redo just like that. And then go to the checker and scale him up by a bunch as well. So just like right around there. And then also for the checker texture, I'm going to bring down the scale a little bit so it starts playing with it. The scale's all the way at one, it kind of doesn't look that great. So we bring that strength down, then it starts playing with the lights and it just looks better. I'm not sure why, but that's just what I found from experience. And then let's click that bevel and see how this looks. So this is looking really, really cool. Now to make it pop, let's add in some uh, camera, some, ca sorry, not camera, some depth of field. So click on your camera, click on the little camera icon and click depth of field. And then sort of zoom in where you want it to be focused. I want it to be focused right here. So click on depth of field and your focus area, focus in on the spot you want. So that's going to be right here. And then on F stop, that's going to depict how specific, how sort of hairline your focus is going to be. So like that. So I'm going to bring it, my F stop looks maybe about that. And then make sure my focus distance is good. And if I were to click the animation, let me turn off the bevel you get a better focus. You get some foreground, foreground blurring and some background blurring. And overall, this is a really good composition. So now what I want to do is start increasing this, the uh, brightness of these lights. But first, let's bring down the intensity of the bloom by a little bit so that the lights aren't too, uh, I mean, the bloom isn't too crazy. That'll get kind of blown out. So let's turn down the bloom and I'm gonna give it a strength of 200 on each light so we can kind of see everything nice and bright but you still have that sort of light fall off just like that then what we can do just to make sure that everything looks good go back and turn that bevel right back on now if you saw in the animation we saw these really really cool interesting uh, reflections happening and that's how and the way i did that is a wireframe so i turned on a wireframe in the wireframe i click replace original and then I brought my thickness just to be a little bit. Now let's add the material, which is just a perfect, a completely glossy metallic shader. So open up the metallic, bring the roughness all the way down. And so now we have that, but to assign it to the wireframe in the material offset, click two. And now you can actually see it happening. So I think the bevel's turned off. So now you can kind of see it happening. Now that the wireframe's turned on, we have even more topology introduced to the scene. So what I'm gonna do is go into edit mode, go into face select, and select all the faces that are not being lit. So I'm gonna hit C and just select these faces just so I can remove unneeded, unnecessary topology. Just have a nice, a nice circle. So, and if you mess up, if you can middle click and undo some, I'm gonna hit X, click faces, and we've removed unnecessary topology from the scene and I think it should animate, yes. So now you can see those reflections happening all around. And then we click, if we turn the bevel back on, you'll see it even more. Now you can get some really, really awesome ref reflections. I'm going to bring up the thickness of my wireframe just to accentuate those reflections. And we'll turn the bevel back off. Sorry, that's the wireframe. Turn the bevel back off. And now we have some really awesome reflections. You can see it happening in here. So yeah, this is what we have. We have those really cool, really nice reflections, this really nice material, and some great lights, and a co super cool animation. So let me show you how to export this really quick. So you're gonna go to this little printer icon, select where you wanna save it, go to FFmpeg, on encoding, change from that to MP4. On medium quality, change to perceptually lossless, and go up to render, render animation. And there you have it. You have a really cool animation. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with this one, and thanks for watching.